this is Dr. Cameron Schiller with UAB's biotechnology program. In today's exciting episode, isolating plasma DNA, the isolation step. Will we get overnight growth? Will we get the plasmid? Stay tuned. Let's go to the lab and find out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are we isolating? Let's find out. The plasmid we're isolating is from adgene. It's the PEGFEC1ER alpha. ER stands for estrogen receptor alpha, and it has a green fluorescent tag on it. Now, let's go isolate the plasmid, shall we? Let's go. Okay, the big question is, did they grow or did they not grow? Ooh, the suspense is killing me. Let's find out. Oh, it grew. It grew. Marvelous. Let's go take four mils of this and put it into our 1.5 microcentrifuge tube. Oh, 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 oh. What do you mean four mils won't fit into a 1.5 mil microcentrifuge tube? I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's go do it. Okay, let's see how we can do this. I've already got my 1.5 microcentrifuge tube ready to go. Take this off, mix it up. Oh, 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 oh. I never said I was gonna put it all in at one time. So we have one and a half mils in there. I think you know where I'm going with this. We're gonna kinda add a little centrifuge, remove the supernatant, add a little bit more. What do I say? Mix it up, mix it up. So these are our two colonies that we picked. And I have the tubes labeled and our centrifuge set at 6,800 times G. Remember our little thing about the hinge being on the outside? And we're gonna centrifuge for two minutes. See you in two minutes. What I'm gonna do is I like to put all my solutions in order so I know what to grab. We have our resuspension solution. Next, we'll use our lysis solution and we have to neutralize that, our lysis solution. And then finally, our ethanol added wash solution. I do have the elution buffer, but I'm gonna hold that off until the very, very end. So I'm gonna keep it in here. And these are our spin columns that we're going to place the lysis into to collect our plasma DNA. You see a little bit of a pellet down there, can't you? Here's what we're gonna do. This is my waste. That's it. You see the pellet in there? All right, we're gonna add some more. So that's number two, number two. Close it. Mix it up, make sure it's nice and mixed. Pellet this. And I'll see you in another two minutes. Okay, let's see. Uh, the pellet looks a little bit bigger, doesn't it? A little bigger. Let's continue on. Change tips so we do not contaminate the different colonies. One more spin. The final two minutes. We'll be back. A little bit bigger. A 
Let's go on the other side and resuspend. Now we're going to resuspend our pellet with resuspension solution. Remember, we did add our um, RNA um, A to it. But before we do that, I do want to make sure that we have as much of our fluid out as possible. So all I'm going to do is just get the last little bit of fluid out. I'm just going to drop the tip in there. I'm going to throw it all away anyway. Get our last little bit of fluid. Oh, Dr. Sheeler, what a steady hand. Now, 250 microliters of our resuspension solution. See, 250. Resuspension solution. Make sure it's right. Yes, it is. Cap that in a minute. Resuspend, resuspend, resuspend. Oh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. There we go. Resuspend, resuspend, resuspend. That, my friends, is how you can get four mils in one of these. Now we are completely done with the resuspension solution. I get it out of the way so I don't make a mistake. Lysis. I'm also going to add 250 microliters of our lysis solution. One, two, three, four. Lysis is exactly what it says. It is lysing or breaking open the bacteria. One, two, three, four. And if someone wants to do five, five. We're done with the lysis. I'm getting it out of the way. However, we actually have to neutralize what we just did. And that's 350 microliters. All right, 350 microliters is what we're adding. Here we go. Oh my gosh, did you see that? See that gooey, gunky, gooey stuff? Good, we just neutralized it. So basically, we're making a precipitate that's gonna collect everything. Except for the plasmid DNA. Cap it. Get it out of the way. Let's go centrifuge. 12,000 times G or greater for five minutes. And my trusty lab assistant, Igor, has already set this up for 12,000 times G for five minutes and I will see you in five more minutes. These are the columns that we're gonna use with a little collection tube on it. These columns right here, come out. We're gonna put the supernatant in here, centrifuge, so that all that supernatant, specifically the plasmid, will get bound to a little tiny column in there. So let's see how much I can get out. Take as much as I can without getting the, disturbing the column. So slow on doing it. Slow, 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 slow. I have to get greedy and get it all. Now we transfer the other one. Let's go. 
We're gonna centrifuge this for one minute at 12,000 times G, this centrifuge. This step is actually taking all of the liquid, send it through the column, and along the way, the plasmids are going to get stuck in that column, and all the like leftover liquid is just gonna come into that collection tube. We're gonna get rid of that liquid, and now we're gonna wash the um, column, to kind of remove a lot of um, junk, junk, junk. We got our wash, and if I'm not mistaken, it's at 500, and we're gonna do it twice. Remove the column, dump the flow through, replace the column. Now we're gonna add 500 microliters of our wash solution. I'm gonna centrifuge this for one melt more minute at 12,000 times G. Now we wash and repeat. Again, discard the flow through. Wash the second time, 500 microliters of our wash solution. Another minute at 12,000 times G. All right. Dump the flow through, replace, and we are going to centrifuge one more time with nothing. We want to make sure as much of that wash is out of the column. Twelve thousand times G, another minute. May have a little bit of uh, liquid in there, but we centrifuge. Now, we are going to transfer the spin column to a fresh, clean micro centrifuge tube, just like this. We can discard this. Now we're gonna add 50 microliters of our elution buffer, so we can get out all the DNA, plasma DNA. What I normally do is once I add it, add it straight to the center. Boop. Next one. I'm gonna let this stuff sit for two minutes before I centrifuge. Now note how I'm putting this in. I can't close the cap. So what I'll do, see how I have it like this? Have the cap facing down. Otherwise, it'll shear off. So what we're gonna do, two minutes. Then we'll find out if we have any plasma DNA and its purity. There we go, 50 microliters. Let's find out if we have any plasmid DNA. Okay, this is the um, nano drop from Thermal Fisher. We're gonna determine the purity and the concentration of the plasmid DNA. Wipe this off, and we have to blank it with the same buffer that we use to elude out the column. Now, you can use anywhere from one to two microliters on these nano drops. I'm gonna use two microliters. Bring up two microliters if you can see that. Close the arm. Press blank. All right, we're ready to go. Open this thing up. Wipe it off. Two microliters.
measure. Okay, we've got 387.5 nanograms per microliter and our 260 is 1.88. Oh, that is pure DNA. The 260 measures the purity. The purity is basically the nucleic acid is measured at 260 nanometer wavelength where proteins are measured at 280 nanometers. So 260 over 280. If there's a lot of protein contamination, you'll have a much lower number. However, DNA is considered DNA or nucleic acid is considered uh, pure if it's DNA anywhere from 1.8 to about 2, but closer you are to 1.8, that's basically what's accepted for DNA. Closer to 2 is accepted more for RNA. We're at 1.88. This is really, really pure. Let's move on to the next sample. As you can see, Concentration is 412.5 nanograms per microliter. Again, the absorption is 1.89. It's within the 1.8 to 2, and it is relatively close to 1.8, which means we have pure DNA. Now we know that we actually can isolate plasmid. We answer the question. Do we have plasma DNA? Yes. Did the stuff grow overnight? Obviously, we just saw that. So yes, we were able to isolate plasma DNA and pick a colony and let it go overnight. And that happened. So this has been an exciting episode of Dr. Sheeler's Lab Shorts. Oh, I have been reminded we must refrigerate our resuspension solution. Again, this has been Dr. Sheeler and Dr. Sheeler's Lab Shorts. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it's helpful. Any suggestions or comments for future um, episodes, please email me at the below address. I'll see you next time and have a great day.